Today's project is a 2015 Ford F-150 whose oil service meter indicates it's time for fresh oil and a new filter. With the hood open, it's a great time to inspect the engine and service the other fluids to keep the engine running like new. People often say, I don't change my own oil because the price is so cheap it's not worth it. I don't allow others to change my oil or repair my vehicles if I have the ability to do it myself. The list of horror stories from shoddy practices to upselling you things you don't need are often more costly than the false economy of a cheap price tag that often changes to your surprise as you get the bill. I recently bought a set of tires online and when I called the store to have them mounted, I asked the price and verified that it was $40, but when I got the bill, it was $120. The usual surprise, surprise, surprise was added to the price. I only use the best quality to ensure the best outcome. Service stores use the most affordable product to ensure the most profit. Have you ever wondered how they happen to have the right part for your car? They use universal filters so they don't have to stock the hundreds of filters you see in the auto parts store. They don't have to match the factory specifications. They just have to fit. If you had your choice between small shoes and large shoes, which would you choose? When it comes to filters, that's how it goes. They don't get the one that's the correct size. They get one that they can match the threads and fit in the space. Be sure to lubricate the mating seal with oil. If the filter hangs down, it can be partially filled with oil to prevent a dry start. If it's mounted sideways, it cannot be filled, but I always add a small amount of oil to lubricate the threads. Using better performance parts improves the longevity at a price that you can determine. I spent some time in an auto parts store comparing oil filters for my F350. The diesel engine oil filter uses an internal engine chamber instead of a disposable metal body. I was able to see and compare the filter media. The Wix used a high pressure synthetic fiber. The other comparable filter used a coarse paper that felt similar to a brown paper trash bag and had many fewer ribs. I also did this comparison with air filters and found a similar result. Name brands and fancy boxes did not result in quality products on the inside. So I used a little more expensive filter and have a lot more confidence that I'm doing a better job for my engine. When the filter is installed, turn it until the seal is seated. Then tighten three quarters of a turn with a filter wrench. Quality oil filters are specifically designed for synthetic oils and clearly marked. Many new cars have a sound dampening baffle underneath the motor that must be removed. The F-150 is no exception. Remove the four fasteners from the panel and remove the panel from underneath the vehicle so it doesn't accidentally get stained by oil spills. This is one of those tedious things that slow down and frustrate the rapid oil change shops and are damaged by carelessness. This truck had free oil changes as part of its sales package. The goal was to get the customer in the shop where they could upsell needless stuff at exorbitant prices. I read the service manual intervals and stop them from prematurely servicing the differentials and transfer case and adding special additives. I also found the evidence of their carelessness. They had damaged the baffle from over tightening the mounting screws. While under the car draining the oil, it's a great idea to check the tires for wear. This tire shows wear on the right hand side, a strong indication of a vehicle that needs a front end alignment. Modern cars use engine service parameters from the computer to determine the best time to change the engine oil. Should the oil be changed early? No. Save that money and use it to invest in better quality oil and filter and you'll get more longevity out of the motor. Remove the oil drain plug and allow the engine to drain completely. There is no race. Your goal is quality, not the speed of a rapid oil change store. Along with the filter, I only use Mobile One synthetic oil. I was an aircraft mechanic in the U.S. Air Force for 26 years, and the cases of synthetic oil I put in jet engines were clearly marked Mobile without exception. 
I trust Mobile to produce the best synthetic oil because they've been doing it for aircraft for many, many decades. A word of caution. Always wear gloves when servicing oil. Repeated exposure has been known to cause problems for laboratory animals. It's good practice to always protect yourself because oil can be absorbed through the skin. It's especially important with used oil because it will contain toxic wear metals from the engine. When the oil has stopped draining completely, clean the drain plug and clean the oil drain port and then reinstall the drain plug and tighten securely. But do not use air tools. The number one complaint from customers with oil chain shops is a stripped drain plug or a drain plug that falls out later. Be sure to remove any oily gloves prior to installing the baffle and tighten the bolts hand tight. I found it's easier if you put one front bolt in and pull the panel backwards to install the rear bolt. Then the panel will be suspended by two bolts and make it much easier to install the other side. With oil drained and the pan removed, I now remove the filler cap and verify the oil weight. The W number on the 5W30 indicates the oil weight. Be sure to clean any dust from the funnel before you install it in the oil cap. Engines call for different weights for summer or winter driving and towing heavy loads, etc. All this is outlined in the service manual, but is not taken into account when time and money is the key factor at the get em out quick service store. Be sure to read your owner's manual and inform yourself so that you use the proper weight of oil for your conditions. I use a large funnel that will support a full 5 quart bottle of oil. I begin by adding a bottle of Lucas Synthetic Oil Additive. It's much thicker than oil and clings to the surface and helps the oil perform better. I add it first so the oil can mix with it and carry it into the engine instead of riding on top of it initially. I buy the oil in a 5 quart jug. It's cheaper than the individual 1 quart bottles. As the oil is filling the engine, I am checking the other fluids and the belt for wear. The nozzle I have here is from a jug of diesel exhaust fluid, commonly referred to as DEF. I especially like the accordion design with its air compensating inlet valve. It works very well to adjust the flow of fluid or stop it completely without spills. Today's engines need quality parts and fluids because smaller engines operate at higher RPM and are finely tuned by the computer to optimize performance. I return the used oil to the jug and gauge the oil consumption by checking the quantity on the bottle sight tube. After the oil has time to rest and drain back into the engine, the dipstick is checked and cleaned and rechecked on both sides because each side can give a different reading. Wipe the dipstick and reinsert it and check again. The coolant was a little low, so now it's time to blend and service the cooling system. I use only distilled water. It helps prevent scale and contamination from degrading the cooling system and has a noticeably lower freezing point than tap water. I have left distilled water in my garage through the winter without it freezing. This time I'm using the recycled diesel exhaust fluid bottle with its accordion nozzle. I add one gallon of undiluted antifreeze and one gallon of distilled water. I rinse the original jug with distilled water and add the mixture to the jug. I do not use universal antifreeze. I trust the fact that the factory had a reason for the blend they chose and I stick with it. I don't mix different colors of antifreeze because it would be impossible to tell when the antifreeze has become diluted or broken down from age. I returned the unused portion of the mix back to the original bottle and relabeled it 50-50 mix. Next, I turned my attention to the brake fluid, which was dark with contamination. 
Be sure to clean the cap in the surrounding area before you remove the cover to prevent contamination from falling into the open reservoir. I removed the contaminated fluid from the brake reservoir with a one-man brake bleeder and a siphon pump. This could easily be done with a turkey baster, but it will take a little longer as you can only drain a small amount at a time. When the reservoir has been drained, do not pump the brakes. Now refill the brake reservoir with the same fluid called for on the brake reservoir cap. Using this method does not require any form of brake bleeding because no air is introduced into the system. If you are thinking I didn't get all of the fluid out so why bother, consider a transmission fluid change. Approximately one third of the transmission fluid is actually changed. The fluid in the oil cooler, the torque converter, and the valve body does not drain, but over the course of a couple changes, the bulk of the fluid is removed. I use this same method for draining the power steering reservoir, but this truck does not have a conventional power steering pump. When I removed the air filter, at first glance it didn't seem to be that bad, but when I compared it to the new filter, the difference was very obvious. High quality filters can be purchased online. Buying extra can save money in shipping costs. As part of my servicing, I added fuel injector cleaner to the fuel tank to give this truck a well-rounded service. Fluids are less expensive locally. Shipping costs make them prohibitively expensive online. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about your car, please leave them in the comments section below. If you've learned something, please like and share. Subscribers are always welcome.